Functions. So our next speaker is from Synopsis, Jean-Marc Ferré, who's in the verification group, uh, corporate application engineer, uh, speaking from Grenoble, based in Grenoble. Um, the topic uh, is uh, designing safer cars, a journey in ISO 26262 territories. Uh, Jean-Marc Ferré is a certified automotive functional safety professional. He is part of Synopsis' verification group and is heavily involved with certitude specification a fault injection tool from Synopsis. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, so, very briefly, this is the agenda of the things I will present today. And, uh, of course, you have uh, already seen that, uh, that slide. Uh, currently, uh, what I'd like to, to come back on is uh, about the essence and the safety mindset. And I feel that the ISO was built on one observation, is that if anything can go wrong, it will. Uh, which On which uh, three questions can be derived, what can possibly go wrong, how to avoid it to become catastrophic. And catastrophic has currently two aspects. One is a technical aspect that you can see on the right, like uh, car taking fire after a crash or maybe car crashing, why it should not have. And the second uh, catastrophic uh, effect could be that you could end up in court. And uh, I believe that a number of companies are understanding that if they are following the what's going on in the US. So uh, second element uh, based on that is how to demonstrate that the measures that you have taken are effective and that you have done a good job in uh, uh, securing uh, the way your uh, system behaves and the, the car uh, are uh, built. So as a safety engineer, you have to be paranoid and uh, question everything. And the uh, familiar ex exercise for a safety engineer would be root cause analysis. And uh, something which is fundamental in this case is to question the answers. And I would encourage everybody to do that. Um, currently, what can go wrong? Well, here we have a system with uh, hardware and maybe some software running on it. Uh, uh, there are a couple of observations. You can get faults inside the software. It's called systematic faults. You can get same type of systematic fault inside the hardware. And in addition, in the hardware, you can get permanent or transient faults. So how to address those issues? Well, the response from a safety perspective is to extend your system to implement some safety mechanism. Again, those safety mechanism can be hardware or software. And, uh, of course, they are subject to the same kind of issues, so systematic faults in the software, systematic or random faults in the hardware, whether permanent or transient. Currently, if we do a uh, root cause analysis on those systematic faults, we would find that they are due to design specification, design capture, design transformation. So by design capture, I mean the work done by a designer to convert a specification into real code, design verification. Um, design verification, you may argue that it's only indirect, but currently if uh, some bugs are remaining inside the uh, design, it's because the verification was not good enough. Um, for random faults, their root cause is uh, always linked to some physical effects like aging, particles, etc. And uh, if you do again the same kind of things, uh, well, you would say, see that, uh, for example, specifications are subject to holes, to ambiguities. Of course, the uh, ISO 26262 has implemented safety measures regarding those elements. And, uh, for example, in the standard, uh, you would be uh, required to do requirement tracking, specification reviews, etc. And uh, at the opposite side, regarding the supporting tools and processes, are also subject to bugs and incompleteness. And again, you have some safety measures, and those safety measures would be called tool qualification. There are, of course, uh, additional measures, but this is uh, just a few examples. So what you will have to verify, demonstrate, and document as a safety engineer or as a verification engineer uh, touching uh, safety-related blocks is that the implemented functionality is the right one, that it fulfills the requirements, that it works smoothly in the context of the system. Well, of course, if when you are pressing the brake pedal, nothing happens. That's a bug, uh, and uh, it's not a good thing to have. Uh, you would also have safety mechanisms, so uh, they should be silent in absence of a fault. It's not absolutely mandatory, but 
that it is usually desirable, and in some cases it is mandatory, um, that uh, they are triggered in presence of a faulty behavior and that the design reach a safe state. And uh, you could also have a periodic test to check the health of the design and uh, currently this is uh, quite important because you want to avoid fault accumulation over time. It's pretty difficult to uh, design a system which is safe against one fault, maybe against two faults, but if you can have thousands of faults inside your system, uh, it, it's becoming extremely hard to have something that, uh, that is robust, so you have to have a periodic sanity check. And of course you want a flow which is robust, so implementation tools, as it was uh, said earlier, do not introduce bugs or should not introduce bugs, and verification tools should not hide bugs. Um, of course, there are a number of lower level requirements, questions, issues to address, everything to make uh, the life of uh, the uh, engineers very fun, but there is one key element, is that uh, verification in uh, all these processes are absolutely uh, extremely important. Now, verification is difficult and there are several aspects which are uh, making verification uh, difficult. So first, test infrastructure deliver pass-fail status, they do not directly address whether the design has bug or not. So you would end up with a situation like that, and um, let's say you get a failing test out of your uh, verification environment, this is good, there is always something to fix, either in the design or in the verification environment. So those ones are called false negative, again, desirable to avoid them, not always possible. As long as the number of false negative is low, it can be okay to live with them, but you should be careful with it. Now, the, uh, another case is, well, you get a pass out of your verification uh, infrastructure, mm. there is no bug in the design that's perfect. The problem is that this case is completely impossible to this distinguish from the other one where you have bugs in your design and your verification uh, is telling you that everything is okay. And currently those false positives are precisely a, a point that the ISO intend to avoid and uh, by uh, doing functional verification qualification. So you have to qualify your verification tool. Um, what is an effective verification? Well, uh, let's take a simple example. Let's say we have a bug or a defect inside your design. An effective verification will be, exercise, will be able to exercise that bug to propagate the effect of the bug, and your checks will be able to point that there is a problem with your design. Um, I will skip this slide, but let's say that code coverage and functional coverage are only addressing a very partial aspect of this full verification picture, which is the activation aspects. So there are useful metrics, but they don't tell you anything about propagation and detection. Now what we do with certitude is that we take the design and we break it, and currently we can insert two types of faults. We can either insert bugs or defects, and uh, I uh, um, there is uh, one observation that must be done, is that a safety mechanism is both a checker and an element of a design. So it's, it's like Genus, it has two faces, and depending which face you look at, you may uh, handle it in a somewhat different way. The hardware, so design under verification can either be a hardware model, like VHGL, Verilog, System Verilog, or software code, it can also be C, C++, System C. Uh, the verification environment can be about anything, and the force can again be either systematic or random force. Now let's talk briefly about the verification tool qualification because it's an important topic and it's a topic where I see some confusion currently in, uh, in the field. Mm -hmm. So what is a verification tool? A verification tool is more than a simulator. A simulator or a formal property checking tool, they are just engines, and having a qualified engine is nice, but it's far from being enough. So nobody would call this engine a car. So why would you call a verification tool, uh, well, a simulator, uh, a full verification tool? It's not. And if we look at what is inside the verification tool, you would see that there is a number of elements in it. Uh, so some of them could be from uh, uh, recognized providers, like uh, maybe verification IP, simulators, some of others are homegrown elements. Uh, and uh, finally, you would get a regression status out of all those layers of, uh, of things. 
Now, if we look at this, then there is one thing which is clear, is that the verification tool has to be qualified in the context of a flow. And back to my verification tool, what kind of result can I get? I can get a, a false positive pass, a true positive pass, a false negative fail, or a true negative fail. So, uh, false negative fail means bug in the verification environment. False negative pass means a bug in the design which is not highlighted by my verification environment. And currently, if you look at the probability of getting a false positive resource, well, all the elements in red here are the ones with the highest probability of either, uh, well, of masking uh, bugs in the design. So it's not that they would be introducing a bug, clearly a simulator cannot do that, but they can fail to report a bug either because you are missing stimuli or because you are missing shakers. And you need to, uh, to qualify your verification tool, which again is more than a simulator, to prove that you are doing a good job in terms of uh, assessing the effectiveness of your verification. Based on this effectiveness and based on this verification, of course, you must leverage the most effective stimuli or the most effective test also to carry your fault injection campaign and uh, prove that your safety mechanisms are effective. Now, if we go back to certitude in terms of uh, supported fault models, again, certitude can inject false inside C, C++ code which represents software. So, for example, if you are doing software in the loop, you can apply certitude on it. And on hardware models, those hardware models can be uh, modeled at C, C++ level, so quite high level abstracted models, system C, RTL, or gate. So, for C, C++, system C, RTL, and we can uh, inject systematic faults or bugs for tool qualification. It usually doesn't make sense to do that at gate level uh, because uh, currently gate is not the entry point of your design flow. If it would be, then uh, you would still be able to use certitude at that level. And for random defects, whether they are permanent or transient, then we do support uh, fault injection at RTL and GET level. Now, because we are able to support multiple levels of abstraction, that means that you can start using certitude very early in your development process and identify which tests are the best one to be used later in your verification flow, so whether it's at RTL level or for your fault injection campaign. Now, Certitude, of course, is not just a tool sitting there, it's uh, integrated into uh, a full ecosystem with reporting aspects on one side and uh, various engines on the other side. So it could be software, software in the loop, for example, in which case those things would be compiled uh, with a tool like GCC, uh, C, C++ system C models, in which case you may not have, uh, um, well, let's say, a commercial simulator. Uh, we are also able to integrate with uh, Sabre, which is a mechatronic simulator. Of course, with Synopsys, a verification continuum which contains uh, simulation, formal anal analysis, virtual prototype, and with third party tools like uh, our friends from uh, Mentor and Cadence or formal analysis tools. In terms of uh, usage uh, worldwide by, uh, by customers, so we have a number of testimonials and uh, I um, just pick a few of them. Uh, some of them being related to automotive or heavily related to automotive. And uh, we have a number of additional papers on our SNUG website, uh, which are all in direct endorsement of certitude, either for uh, fault, uh, well, defect injection or bug. And uh, in terms of benefits by using uh, certitude, uh, verification engineers and safety engineers are now able to reveal the false positive issues that they can have in their verification environment or uh, in terms of exercising their design because one of the key elements, as it was uh, highlighted previously, is that if a fault doesn't propagate, why is it, is it like that? Is it because the fault is intrinsically safe? And we also have a, a part of certitude which can basically safe, or it could be because you are missing uh, scenarios, or maybe that the scenario is not exactly doing what it should. So, 
Uh, there are source of uh, false positive which can be missing broken checker, missing broken test scenario, infrastructure issues. And uh, currently, again, uh, safety mechanism is both part of the design and part of a verification of the design. And uh, for safety engineers, they are now able to provide evidence that the risk of systematic faults or bugs in the developed product is minimized, that the verification effectiveness and verification tool qualification is correct, so that they have achieved high confidence in detecting bugs in their design or bugs in their safety mechanism, that their safety mechanisms through, again, defect injection campaign are effective, and that they are able to demonstrate the robustness and the effectiveness of the safety mechanism. So maybe uh, to broaden the picture a little bit, currently Synopsys has been uh, involved in the automotive market since uh, many, many years, and has a broad range of products, and uh, which can even be quite surprising. So, of course, we have complete verification environment and infrastructure, but we go also up to things like LED lighting design and simulation, so really a very wide range of products. Uh, so, we, we're, well, we've we been in that domain since uh, many years. So, this is what I wanted to quickly communicate uh, during that uh, that conference. Is there any question? Okay. Well, if there is no question, uh, please feel free to. Is there any questions from Bristol? No questions from Bristol. No questions okay. online. Okay. So thank you very much. That's Jean-Marc. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>